Hello, this is Hildron here from the CC, here today to give you a tutorial in animating with physics. Now, if you haven't seen my demo reel of the new version of Cheetah 3D, you might want to see that first just to see what we're going to be going into here. Now, this is the 3D software that I use. Other programs have this kind of capability, but if you do not have any software for 3D animating or you have not animated with physics before, this will probably give you some ideas on the basics of animating with physics. So, I'm going to open up Cheetah 3D here. And what I'm going to do is just do a simple animation that kind of demonstrates how physics can be used to make some pretty cool things. So I'm just going to clean up the interface here a bit because we won't need any of these things. All right, let's get to it. I'm just going to start with a plane. And I'm going to resize that here. And then I'm just going to use some cubes for this example here, or some boxes, technically. So just uh, if you want to follow this tutorial, just position some boxes. And uh, you can copy-paste these and just kind of position them randomly. Kind of like this. Okay, and we're just going to start with this. So then what you want to do is, in Cheetah 3D6, you have something called the Bullet Physics Engine, which lets you apply... Uh, dynamics. Now, dynamics let other things happen automatically in the scene without you having to keyframe them manually. This is a ginormous time saver. So, I want all three of these objects to be applied with dynamics. So, what I'm going to do is go up to modifiers, excuse me, tags, and I'm going to go down to rigid body. Okay, so now you can see these bowling pins are here. That means we have the rigid body tag applied. What I'm also going to do is, is go to the plane and I'm going to change something here. Now, when you have these linear factor and angular factor parameters, what you want to do is set these to zero because right now we don't want the plane to move, we just want it to catch our objects. So we're going to set those to zero so it doesn't move anywhere. All right, so now I'm going to pull the timeline back up just so I can play this back for you. Now, as you can see, when I move the playhead, nothing happens because we have no keyframes. All this stuff is going to be happening automatically because of the physics engine. All right, so I'm going to play this back and watch what happens. There you go. As you can see, the boxes fell pretty realistically, and they bounced off each other. So we can go a little bit further with this if we add more of these. We zoom out here, just add more, and maybe add some spheres. Okay, so now we have some more objects, and I'm going to apply the uh, rigid body tag onto the ball as well. So now when you play this back, you get a lot more action going on, and you get the ball actually rolls off. It rolls off and falls, just like with normal gravity. So that is pretty cool. So now what I'm going to demonstrate is setting masses. So I can do... Let me just see where this uh, ball falls off here. It looks like it falls off the right side there. So let me just play this back. Yep, it falls off the right side. Okay, so I can take an object here, and let's say I want to make a block right here. We'll just uh, set this gently above the ground and make it thin. And we're actually going to make it taller, and we're going to position it up like this. So now if I play this back, you might notice that it stands there and then gets hit off and it falls pretty easily because all these things have the same mass. But if I go to the rigid body tag on this box, I can actually change the mass. So if I make the mass zero, it pretty much has no weight and it will just um, not move anywhere. So if you don't want this thing to move, you can set it to zero. And now in reality, if something had no weight, it would... I guess float away, but um, when you're doing animation with physics, zero will make it go nowhere. And if I set it to something like maybe three, you'll see that it gets hit, but it probably only gets nudged a little bit. See how it got nudged a little bit? Now it still fell, but if I turn it up even more, we can make it even more resistive to that hit. See how much slower that was? So that's pretty cool. And if I actually, let's say, expand this, I could probably demonstrate this even a little bit better. See, it takes longer to fall over than if I had this set at 1, uh, for example. So let me just set it to 1 again so you can see a difference. And now watch how much faster it goes. See? So that is pretty awesome. 
Now these are just a few of the basic things. You can adjust a lot more parameters here and inside Cheetah there are a lot more tags for you to mess with here. You can do soft bodies, anchors, ropes, and you can simulate a lot more with physics. And if you click on the bullet option in your toolbar here, you can actually change the dynamics here. Um, it's got the B there for the bullet engine and it's labeled dynamics. You can change the overall environment. So all these tags adjust the objects individually, but if you want to change the overall environment, just click on dynamics and you can change that. And you can have a lot of fun with physics. So that is a very, very basic look at animating physics in Cheetah 3D. Uh, these types of principles do apply in other programs. You will see a lot of the same vocabulary like gravitation and mass and rigid body, things like that. And you can pretty much recreate this in any program that has physics engine capabilities. It is a, it is a huge time saver compared to having to keyframe all this stuff manually. Alright, so that is all for this uh, basic tutorial, and I will see you in the next one.